Okay, moving on. Matthew 26, 36. We're not doing chapter by chapter now because this is important. We're doing subject by subject. You know, you, you some of these churches do, you know, we do a chapter and they, you know, it's like a kangaroo with rockets. Hang on tight. We didn't learn nothing. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. So we just had the Lord's Supper. They come out, they're singing. He heads off to Gethsemane, which is by the Mount of Olives, a little area. You're not going to believe the pictures I saw of Gethsemane. You got to be kidding. You're not ever going to get me to pay money to go to, to, go to Jerusalem. The nonsense. They got supposedly a statue there of the 12 disciples or 11 disciples and all that. That's that church I chose, that the school, the Baptist school I told you here in America, where they, they don't know what uh, thrice is. Wait a minute. You're going to make a statue of the disciples or whatever. I don't even know what it is. I just saw the statue. And when the Bible says you're not to make no idols. And then had one fruitcake guy there, you know, he got a hat and all that. He's got his white. Through the loom tag in the front. No, I am not listening to that jerk tell me the Bible. And if you're a Baptist, you're going to listen to a Catholic, you're going to listen to an Arabian that has no knowledge of the Bible. And you're going to promote your church and your people to go there. Oh, buddy. I'll tell you about Gethsemane. You take the most least likely place. That's where Jesus was. And I seen paintings of Jesus. You know, he's leaning upon a rock. He's leaning upon. The Bible says, we're going to read, he fell on his face. I only saw one painting. And it was very dark. You know why it was very dark? Because they didn't have street lights. They didn't have flashlights. Then came Jesus with, the, with them unto the place called Gethsemane. Now, Judas is not here. Judas is off getting his money. And says to his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John. I don't know why he didn't mention James and John. I don't know why he mentioned the father. The father didn't, didn't the father stayed in the boat. It began to be sorrowful, very heavy. Now, John on Rice and others will have you to believe that Jesus' moment here is he didn't want to die. That is absolutely correctly wrong. Jesus had no problem with dying. Because he knew he was coming back to life. The problem that Jesus had was he's going to take every single sin, all the sins, all the sins that you did and all the sins you didn't do. He's going to take all the sins of your neighbor and all the sins you, your neighbor didn't do. Your boss, your mother, your pastor, your preacher, the bum on the street, the, the Catholic priest, the, the nun, the, the, the whoever what they call their people, the Jehovah Witness, all the, all the Presbyterian, all the sins since Adam. Whether you did them or not, all the sins of Adam is going to become. Now, you know what that would be like to you and me? Just, And this would be a very tiny, I, I couldn't explain it fully. But this would be like somebody coming up to me and we go walking down the road. We come to a hole, a steel hole in the middle of the road. And they take off the lid off that hole. What's that smell? And it says sewer. And the guy pushes you in. And then you absolutely become filth. In that sewer, there's not only poop, there's urine, there's diseases, there's rats, there's Everything that come out of people's body and more. 
You could die being in that, that filth. There's dead goldfish, live goldfish. Everything that people flush down that toilet. There is not only poo-poo and pee-pee, there's blood. That would be absolutely filth to a human being. That would be adultery, murder, theft, stealing, dishonoring parents. Uh, fornication, looking at pornography, alcohol, everything that man has done that is a sin upon Jesus. You would want to avoid it. You would say, no, 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 I don't want to go there, no, 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 no. But when it comes to sin, not death, that's what Jesus is praying to the Father. Because you know why? I mean, the foreknowledge of God and everything, Jesus is God and God is Jesus. I think there's one thing that Jesus didn't realize as God from the foundation of the earth that God never knew. He said, is there anything that God didn't know? He didn't know what sin was like. Now, Jesus got to the point, he's coming to Calvary, he's like, do you realize what I dealt with with man from the day I was born? You know, I saw things I should not have ever saw. I heard things I never should have heard. My own mother, my own adopted father, my brothers, my sisters, my aunts, my uncles, my nieces, my nephews, my grandparents. The school teacher, the rabbi, the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the scribe, the people in the church, or excuse me, not church, look, look what I said, uh, the, the synagogue. There are people breaking the law. One law, two law, three law, four law, five law, and then they go to temple. Here's God's opportunity on the cross to take on sin. As Moses lift up the shepherd, so shall the son of man be lifted up. And I'm going to be very careful here, but that that, that serpent, if I said shepherd, I meant serpent. That serpent is Satan. And the moment that Jesus is on that cross, he, I want to be careful. I don't want to call Jesus a devil, but that serpent is the devil. Jesus said, as and Moses, as, as Moses lifted up that, that, that rod, that serpent in the wilderness, so is the son of man. I'm going to be, this is very careful ground because I don't want to get myself in trouble, but I do know one thing. Jesus didn't become a sinner. He never committed fornication. He never lied and steal. Boy, that cup, that cup we're looking at, he drank it. I said, that guy pushed you into the sewer. What about that guy reached down and got a bucket of sewage, poured it in a glass, said, here, drink it. How about that guy put a glass in that sewage, and that sewage sat all the way from the time of Adam. And you come up about 30, 40 A.D., you come up, you pull that glass up to here, drink it. I'd be in the garden too, say, Father, this sin is wicked. And we are holy. Death, that's no problem. We're coming out of the grave in three days. I got victory. I know that's going to happen. Jesus had no problem with faith. He saw himself coming out of that tomb before he said in the beginning. But how could God see sin when he's never sinned? He says, my soul is seemingly sorrowful even unto death. See, that's where they say, you know, it's not. Because all the way up to death, he's going to take our sins. Then he's going to go into hell, which many don't believe, and he's going to deposit our sins in hell. 
I'm going to tell you, I think when Jesus was in hell, I don't think he had an air-conditioned suit. I believe he suffered the fire, the flames, as anybody would, as the amount of time he's in there, and even as he's preaching to them. The Bible says he preached to them. He said, here I am. I'm the Messiah. You didn't believe. You didn't do anything God told you to do. All right, gentlemen, I'll take the keys. I'll take heaven. I'll take, you know, life. And I got I got to walk across that river. And I got to go to Abraham's bosom. I got an appointment. I got somebody who's waiting to see me. Watch with me. Now, look. What are the, God gave Adam one commandment. Don't eat the fruit. He blew it. All right, so there's two commandments here. What are they? Tarry and watch. He went a little further, fell on his face. He's laying on the ground. Don't take those Roman Catholic preachers, Baptist preachers. He's up against the rock. And, no, he's not. He's fallen on the face and prayed. Now, we are in serious prayer. If you're going to fall on the ground and you got your face in the dirt, say, oh, my father. Oh, that's God speaking. Oh, my father. If it be possible, let this cup. Now, that cup is never death. That cup is always the wrath of God. America has a cup. Uh, 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 Babylon had a cup. Sodom and Gomorrah had a cup. Bethlehem had a cup. Judah had a cup. Russia has a cup. Spain has a cup. The Aztecs had the cup. The Vikings had a cup. Adolf Hitler has a cup. I've got a cup. And when that cup gets filled, you see, as a Christian, has yeah. But, you know, I can confess my sins. God would, would cleanse me and forgive me my sins. And th then that cup goes down. A Christian's cup, if you stay confessing your sins and you stay right with God, that cup stay, that cup doesn't overfill. But if you don't confess sin and you don't bring them to God, that, get, that cup gets overfilled. You don't get damnation. You get chastisement. Or you could get death. According to what Paul says about the Lord's Supper, which we just finished talking about, you could get sick. But this cup is never death passed from me. A Christian never dies. This body will die, but then you're absent from the body present of the Lord. Christian never dies. Neither does a lost man because he'll pass from this body and wakes up in hell. There's really no death. Nevertheless, not as I will. I, I, I don't want to do it. Look at that. Now, if Jesus said, I don't want to go to the cross, I don't want to die, then that would defile the scriptures where it says he went to the cross. He, he went with cross with joy. He was going to go to the cross. That would defile the scriptures. That's not what we're talking about the cross. We're not talking about death because that would ruin the scriptures. We're talking about something on the cross, which I'm not going to explain because I can't. I'm going to be very careful. But that raw, that serpent on the pole and Jesus and Satan and sin. But on the cross, the blood is spilt. God's blood, Acts 20, 28, and our sins are redeemed. They are in remission by Jesus taking our sin. You think that's gross and wicked and vile for that person to do? Well, Jesus died for that. Just as much as he died for your wickedness. See, you can't put murder high up on anything. You can't put child molester high on the thing. You can't put a, a rapist on high on the thing. And your sins way down here. They're all the same. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no degree of sin. But there are degrees of hell in the lowest hell. 
you could be so wicked and wild with a amount of sins that you get the lowest hell. We've all broken the Ten Commandments. And he cometh unto his disciples, finds them asleep. Oh, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. He said, Terry here and watch. They're not watching. They're tarrying. Jesus said, Terry and watch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tell them Jesus now. Five more minutes, Jesus. They just had a big meal. They're they're, they're starving for sleep. They just walked and said unto Peter, "What could you not watch with me one hour? When was the last time you were in an hour of prayer?" Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, I don't even pray, no, no, I don't. I sing this hymn with my church, I am a liar, sweet hour of prayer. Now sometimes the hymns that your, that your song leader points out for you to sing in church makes you a liar before God. Sweet hour of prayer. You ever pray an hour? Now, if you prayed an hour, okay, amen, glory to God. But if you didn't, what are you doing saying sweet hour of prayer? Liar. That's being recorded in the books. Number 587, whatever number it is, sweet hour of prayer. He's singing, that guy has prayed five minutes. Watch. We say now, watch, there's a commandment, watch and pray. Before he said tarry and watch, they did the tarry. All right, now let's the watch and pray, please. Thou shalt watch and thou shalt pray. That you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, true, but the flesh is weak. Look at that. Even before, before Paul says that there's a battle between the spirit and the flesh, Jesus says it. To the three disciples. And men will joke about that verse. And make it sick and perverted. But the flesh is weak. <laughs> yeah I know you guys were asleep. Your flesh is going to win many times. Because it's weak. And we, 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 we. Don't seek God. And we sin. He went again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, sin, the judgment, the wrath of God, set thy drink it, thy will be. The will of the father is drink that cup, son. Die on that cross, son. Suffer the pain and sufferings and the cat and nine tails and the spitting and, and the, the thorns. You wouldn't drink sewer water, but Jesus is going to drink all the sins of the world. I don't know how else to describe what sin. And he came and found them asleep again. They blew it. Now they didn't do two of them. They weren't praying and they weren't awake. This is why on the third day, they're in the upper room. Boo <laughs> For their eyes were heavy. They just had a big fat meal. You know, Thanksgiving, everybody's all tired. Women are wrapping up, ready to go shopping. Oh, they're just so tired. Can't go to church, but we can go, you know, buy big fat TV screens and all. And then he left them. <laughs> he didn't bother waking up. He went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples. Says to him, sleep on now, take your rest. Okay, I understand that. All right, stay, all right, stay asleep. Sorry I woke you up. 
Behold, the hour is at hand. This is for Jesus. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. All right, here we go. Rise, get up. Let us be going. Let's get out of here. Behold, he is at hand that cometh to betray me. Judas. Okay. Here we go. So, Judas is now come back in the picture. But look what he says in 46. Rise, let us get going. Behold, the hand, the hand that does betray me. Look at verse 45. Sleep on now. Take your rest. Verse 46 says, rise, let's get going. Wait a minute. He just told him, stay asleep. Rise, get your rest. All right, get up. Let's go. I don't understand that. I got a big question tomorrow. The other day, my daughter woke me up. She says, Dad, just check on you. know, you've been asleep for a while. There's a little concern about you. She checked my sugar. Or then, you know, all right, go back to bed, Dad. Because wait, you woke me up. I don't understand what what is happening. Forty five, forty six. Sleep on now, then rise. Let us get going. And that happens frequently in the gospel. And when and while. He yet spank. Lo, Judas, there he is, one of the twelve, one plus twelve is thirteen, came with a great multitude of swords and staves. You recognize that word staves? Staves were used to carry the Ark of the Covenant. It was used to carry the, the table for showbread, the altar of incense. I'm not sure about the brazen altar. I mean the brazen labor. And the brazen altar what they were to carry the, the instruments of God's tabernacle in the wilderness they have brought as weapons against Jesus from the chief priests chief priests were Aaron and his son but there's only one now we got two of them. and the elders of the people now he that betrayed him, Judas, gave a sign. Oh, that's interesting. Judas gives a sign. Judas is a half-breed Jew. Judas will have signs in the tribulation period. The second coming of Judas. Saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he Hold him fast. Now, why did he do that? Because it's the middle of the night. There are no street lights. There's no car lights. Camels, asses, and whatever you're riding don't have headlights. So to make sure you get the right man, come on with me. Come with me. Get on my. Get on my. Get on my. That's him. That's the one. There is no reason. There is no way for you to get the wrong man. Just follow Jews. In the stockyards, I don't know if they still do it today, but when they when they have an animal gathering other animals to their death, what they, what they do, the old-fashioned way, there was a line of animals, they're going in to be slaughtered. The animal that leads them is called Judas. There he comes. He's guiding all the men to one man. He, when he, when, okay, we're waiting for it. Which one is he going to kiss? They can't see. They can't tell. They could have grabbed Peter. Well, I don't think they would grab Peter. Peter would be fighting, kicking. And... The one who Judas kissed, that's who we're talking That's Jesus. They wouldn't even recognize Jesus. I mean, the Catholic Church paints his light bulb around Jesus' head. You would think they would know who Jesus was. If he had the big light bulb around his head. I've seen colored Baptist churches. You know, all the disciples and Jesus got the light bulb. Okay, I guess you got to decipher. I guess Judas had his own light bulb. Now, he that betrayed him, Judas gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he, old fat. They got a thing called Judas's kiss. 
And forthwith he came to Jesus in the middle of the night. Couldn't tell Jesus from anybody. He didn't have the light bulb. He didn't glow in the dark. And said, Hail, Master, small m. Look at that. I don't know what your other Bibles do. You see a small m? Judas didn't believe who Jesus was. Three and a half years ministry with Jesus. Jesus comes up and said, Oh, you're just a master. Did you catch that capitalization? Don't mess with capitalization in the Bible. And kissed him. And said unto him, Jesus said unto him, Judah, friend, would you say that to someone who betrayed you? I've been betrayed by many Christians. I pray for them. Wherefore art thou come? <laughs> Jesus knew he, he wants them to confess. Adam, where art thou? <laughs> then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Now, that's just really. And behold, one of them which was with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew a sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and smote off his ear. And Jesus said, Put away again thy sword into its place, for all that for all they that take up the sword shall perish with the sword. <laughs> Think is not thou I can not pray now pray to the Father, he shall present give me more than twelve legions of angels. That would be about at least seventy two thousand angels. If Jesus wanted to, he could just wipe out the whole planet. Just, Father, bring him. And that's not even all the angels. One angel, the Lord wiped out an entire, almost entire army one night. Two angels destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah. The death angel went through Egypt killing those that didn't that had the blood across the door. You imagine what, 12 legions of angels? But now then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be. All right, now we're going to scripture. Peter ruined the scriptures. We're going to see it's Peter. The same hour, Jesus to the multitudes. Are you come out against a thief? Behold, I come as a thief in the night. Swords and stays for to take me. Yeah, you know how much power Jesus had? <laughs> they were afraid of Jesus. Notice Jesus didn't call a lawyer. He didn't pull out a gun. He didn't pull his powers. I sat daily with you teaching the temple. You laid no hand on me because they feared the people. Remember? But all this is done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him. And fled. Oh, great disciples. Great friends. Mark 14. Mark 14. 35. Mark 14, 35. All right, 32. And they came to the place which was named Gethsemane, which means oil press. And he said to the disciples, sit ye here while I, while I shall pray. All right, there's, sit here. They sit. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John and began to be sore amazed. And to be, he, 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 what's he amazed? Death? Oh, he's sore amazed. I can't believe what's going to happen to me. And said unto him, My soul is seemingly sorrowful unto death. He didn't say death. He said unto death. You know what's going to happen with death? Death is going to right, that take care of the sin. I'm dead. I'm going to go into hell. Tarry here, number one, and watch. There's your two commandments. He went forward a little, fell on the ground, and prayed that if it be possible, the hour might pass from him. That's a long hour. The time will come. 
He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Yes, they are. God can do anything but sin. God can do anything but lie. God can do anything but remember your sins that are under blood. Take away this cup from me. Remember, it's not what I will, but what thou will. And then he cometh and findeth them asleep. Uh-oh, they had a problem. Says unto Peter, Simon. Look at that name, Simon. Sleepeth thou? Could not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray. There's your second and third, or actually third and fourth commandment. And ye enter in temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And he went and prayed, spank the same word. When he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Broke the commandments. You know why? He's come back. You guys are asleep. All right, add that to the cup. They fall asleep during the message. They fall asleep when the Bible's being read. Yeah. I tell them to watch. They're not watching. Okay, disobedience. Add that to the list. For their eyes were heavy, neither which they what to answer. <laughs> they didn't know what to say to them. What could you say? <laughs> Even Peter was... Can you imagine Peter was shell shocked? He couldn't say nothing. And he comes the third time and says to him, Sleep on now and take your rest. It's enough for the hours come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of sinners. Rise up and let us go. There, what? Go to sleep, rest. All right, let's rise up and go. I mean, was it a nap? Was there some time? I mean, I've done that. I've worked third shift. My wife said, All right. Take a little nap, take a cat nap. I fall asleep, all my clothes on, my shoes on. Then she come wake me up and we go to church. Okay, maybe. maybe. Thank you, Lord. That may be it. He that betrays me is at hand. Immediately, while he yet spank, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, thirteen. With him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed, had given them a token. Oh, a science of token. Ooh, look at this. Saying, whosoever I shall kiss, the same as he, take him and lead him away safely. Look, look at Judas. Don't hurt him. Do you know what's going to happen to Jesus from now to the cross? He's going to be beaten. He's going to be spit upon. They're going to yank his beard out. They're going to take a cat of nine tails. They're going to rip his body open. There's going to be pus and blood in that, whatever that water is. He's going to be torn. He's going to be beyond recognition. That's just the Jews. Then the Jew, then the Romans are going to get a, get a whip. Up. They're going to beat the crap out of Jesus, if I can say that. Judas has the nerve to say, keep them safe. That's the devil. Don't harm him. Don't hurt him. Because if you don't harm him, if you don't hurt him, Isaiah 53 will be thrown in the garbage. Did you see that? You see Judas say, Isaiah 53, throw it in the garbage. Don't hurt him. And as soon as he would come, he goes straight forward to him and said, Master, Master small M. I don't mean it. You say, what's that big M? That's the beginning of a sentence. That's not master, God, rabbi. It's just, we're, we're, you see, the Bible don't have those little quotation marks. So it has a comma. Then the, the next word is capitalized. Okay, we're in a quotation. That's not Jesus, Judas calling him master. That's sentence case. Grandma. Grandma put the M in there. Not. The, the, the liar, master, and kissed him. See, you're learning a lot tonight. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them, which stood stood by, drew a sword and, and smote the servant and the high priest and cut off his ear. Here, let me hear your ear. Cut off his ear. There's no ear no more. And Jesus answered and said, Are you come out as against a thief? 
with swords and staves. Remember that stave? That's where it held all the furniture. To take me, I was daily with you in the temple teaching. You took me not. They were afraid of the people. The scripture must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. Okay. Luke 22. See, we're going to study all the scriptures. Luke 22. Let's see, this is 41, but I went a little earlier. All right. 39. And he came out and went as he was wont. One, two, one. In the Mount of Olives. Okay, so Gethsemane is in the Mount of Olives. Scripture with Scripture. Got it? His disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said, at the place would be, this is the place that Jesus came often. He said to him, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he withdrew himself about a stone's cap. So take, take a rock, throw it. That's how far Jesus went. And kneeled down and prayed. Uh oh, he kneeled this time. Saying, Father, if thou will be willing, remove this cup from, from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine is done. And there appeared unto him angel, unto him from heaven, strengthen him. That's not recorded in other scriptures that we read. He's there, he's in agony. An angel comes down to comfort him. Being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as great drops of blood falling down to the earth. And that's a you can look that up for a medical term. Jesus is in complete agony that his body. The blood comes out instead of sweat. And that can happen. <clears throat> and when he arose from the from the from prayer, he was come to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. Sleeping for sorrow. Did you get that? They're so sorrowful they went sleeping. <laughs> that don't make sense. Oh, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> Friend, I, I have been married to two wives that died of cancer. I have had many problems in my life. Not, there have been people who have more problems. Than, I have never fallen asleep because of sorrow. I have had doctors and nurses say, listen. Go home, go to sleep. You're tired. You've been here X amount of days. And then you go home, you don't sleep. He said, and I, I, there have been cases where I've gone home and I passed out <laughs> because I'm not sleeping. He said, and why sleep be? Oh, yeah, why sleep be? Rise and pray. Here we go. Let's add two more commandments. Remember? Rest, lest ye enter temptation. Oh, so sleeping will get you tempted. Maybe you start having dreams you should not be having. Well, yet he spake, behold, a multitude. He that was called Judas, one of the twelve, thirteen, went before them, drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Luke doesn't record the two other prayers. He said, well, Luke said he knelt. Well, there were three times. One time he knelt, and two times maybe he fell to the ground. Maybe two times he knelt, one time he fell to the ground. But Matthew and Mark didn't record the angels showing up either. But Jesus said unto them, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw that yeah, saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with a sword? This would be the disciples. 
and one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Ooh, look at more detail. Right ear has been cut off. See, you got to read. You got to rightly divide. You get the whole entire story. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. No, no, no. And he touched his ear and healed him. Now, there's a great debate, believe it or not. Did he pick up the ear, put it on the guy's head, boom? Or did he touch the spot where the ear was and grew an ear? That that guy could pick up his ear, go home, and put it on the mantle. Look at this. Look what Jesus did. And then his friends would come on. Hey, Bob, what? Lend me an ear. <laughs> that was funny. And Jesus said to the chief priests and captains of the temple, and he elders, which were come to him. You didn't read that in Matthew and Mark. You read the servants of the chief priests and the elders and I think he said scribes. Scribes are the captains of the temple, the military, or the military and the scribes. So the chief priests, according to Luke, are there. Be you come out against me as a thief with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple and you stretched forth no hands against me because they were afraid of the people. But this is your hour, the power of darkness. See? Okay. John 18. We're learning some things, aren't we? You know what your typical Baptist lesson would be in the Sunday school? All right, well, we did one chapter. You didn't learn nothing. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book Kadron. Hey, we learned about it. There's a brook. <laughs> Now, when you go over there on your Jerusalem and your Israel, we're going to walk the walk where Jesus was. Is the book of Rome there? Where was a garden? Ooh. Ooh. Father, please let this cup pass from me. If not thy will. All the sins that go back to, what's that say? The residents were Adam and Eve. I'm not saying Adam and Eve were in this garden, but look how it goes back to the garden. You know what's going you know to be said after his resurrection? Mary's sitting there, and you know what it's going to say? She's going to see a man. She's going to say, I think he was the gardener. You know who the first gardener was? Adam. You know what Jesus is called? He's called the second Adam. The first Adam sinned. The second Adam took sin, being sinless, entered, which entered with his disciples. So he goes in the garden, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place where Jesus oftentimes resorted hither with his disciples. Okay, we learned something else. This place was common for the disciples in Jesus. This was probably one of the places where Jesus slept. He didn't have a house. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests, Pharisees, come thither with lanterns, dark, torches, it's dark, and weapons. He's powerful. Jesus, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto whom seek he? <laughs> he knows. They answered that Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as he said unto him, I am he, they went backwards and fell onto the ground. <laughs> they go to the ground backwards. Not forward, backwards. The words of Jesus' mouth Doink dominoes. And he asked them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. 
He answered, he said, I have told you that I am he. You should know why I am. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. The disciples. Also, when the disciples fled, according to John, Jesus said, please let these guys go. You got to read all four Gospels. It, it's all, you got to read all three of us in there. I mean, you go run in there about the birthday of Jesus, December 20th. It's only one place in the Bible. That the saying may be fulfilled which spank of them which thou gavest me, I lost none. You know where that. Then Simon Peter, having a sword drawn, smoked the high. Oh, it was Simon Peter with the sword that drew the ear. All four scriptures. High priest's servant cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. Hey, we know the guy's name. And he's talking. Because we'll read later when he's by the fire warming his head to be, hey, weren't you the one that cut off my, well, I think it was uncle's or cousin's ear? <laughs> the story got around. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into thy sheath, the cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink of it? Peter would have wiped them all out to protect his God and Savior. And the band and the captain and officers of the Jews, of the Jets and Borden of the Jews, took Jesus and bound him. That's the entire story of. Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. We went through all the Gospels. If we were in your typical Baptist church, we would have just got Matthew, what was it, 26? Yeah, Matthew 26. And even that, we wouldn't get the whole thing because we know we got to do the attendance and we got to talk about the baseball, the football game that happened Sunday and we got to clown around. And, we, and then, okay, now open your Bibles and we got people got to try to find Matthew. And <coughs> my throat is dry. <coughs> And then by the time you get to it, and then, you know, the, the funny jokes and stuff like that, you've only done half the message. But you see, the whole thing is, you would probably done Matthew 26, verse 1, all the way to the end, in one night, one morning service. We, we're going through all the chapters of the Bible. That's, uh, you know, it's not. I was in a church one time that we were doing Joshua. And he said, you know what? I think we got four chapters in Joshua. It's repetitious. the same thing over and over. And then we moved to Ruth. Are you claiming that you've done all Joshua? I don't know. I'm not in that church no more. I don't want to be in that church. You learned a lot by... This story is in all four chapters. You learned a lot today, didn't you? Some people are going to say, wow, I didn't even knew that. But you're going to have your pagan festival of Valentine's Day, and that's nowhere in the scriptures. By the way, my wet cloth on Valentine's that I posted today, and I put on uh, Twitter, Twitter says that, you know, this, 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 thing that's been put on us could be offensive and deceptive. Wow. Good is evil and evil is good. Welcome to the times of the scriptures.